Do you find yourself often confused with how to compare fractions? In this video, I'm going to show you some strategies on how you can compare fractions like 3 fifths and 3 sevenths. True story, did you know that Whataburger decided to offer a one-third pound hamburger? And it actually lost sales because people thought that McDonald's quarter pounder, one-fourth, was larger than a third of a pound because the four is larger than three. Many people find comparing fractions a difficult idea. So I want to show you some ways today of how you can compare fractions that might be a little unconventional or things you haven't heard of before. The first strategy we're going to talk about is called the common numerator strategy. Many times when I have students, they're sort of programmed to think, I must find a common denominator. They're very robotic. I want to free you to think about some other strategies that might be useful. You'll notice here I've got 3 fifths and 3 sevenths, and you'll notice that they both have a common numerator. Remember, this number on top, or the part of the whole, is called the numerator, okay? This is our denominator down at the bottom. If I think of these in terms of the unit fraction, I can actually figure out which one is larger based on that unit fraction. 3 fifths is the same as 3 copies of 1 fifth. I can also think of 3 sevenths as 3 copies of 1 seventh. I want you to think for a moment if you had a pizza and that pizza you cut into fifths or five pieces and then you had another pizza same size and you cut it into sevenths or seven slices. I want you to think about which slice would be bigger, right? And I have a video on unit fractions that you might want to go back and look at if you're wondering what a unit fraction is. So remember, a unit fraction is just when we have one over a number. Let me do just a few drawings. I'm going to use rectangles instead of circles, and let's just peek and see if we can figure out which one is bigger. Here are my two sketches. You'll notice that I made both holes the same size. This one I cut into seven pieces. This one I cut into five pieces or fifths. If you are really hungry, which fraction or which pizza do you want a slice of? The sevenths or the fifths? Fifths, right? And typically students know that um, when we cut a hole into a smaller number of pieces, the slices are going to be bigger. So when I have common numerators, if I think of it in terms of three copies or even three slices of one fifth versus three copies of or three slices of one seventh, which one is going to be more? Well, I know that fifths are larger than sevenths, so three fifths is going to be greater than three sevenths. This is how I can use common numerators to compare fractions. The next strategy I want to show you is how to use benchmark fractions to compare as well. Now you might be thinking, what is a benchmark fraction? I've never heard of that before. A benchmark fraction would be something like one half or one whole, and really even we could think of that as closer to zero. I'm going to use my same two fractions that I was using before with the common numerators, but I'm going to show you how we can also use comparing to a benchmark fraction to tell which one is larger. Is three fifths more than one half or less than one half. So again, when I say benchmark fractions, really what I'm talking about is zero, one half, or one whole. So I'm gonna be comparing them in relationship to those. So three fifths, is it more than one half? Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, Marcia, half of five isn't a nice number. You're right, it's not. Let's think through it though. Half of five would be two and a half. Okay, but we don't normally write a fraction like that. So this would be more than a half or less than a half? More than a half, you're right. So I'm gonna write more. Now let's look at this fraction right here. What would be half of seven? And again, if you're like, I don't know what half of seven is, think about money. So I know that $3.50 is half of seven. Is this more than one half or less than one half? It would be less. So right away I can see that 3 fifths is greater than 3 sevenths because it is more than half and 3 sevenths is less than a half. I've written another example here, 5 eighths and 4 fifths. Now, I look, I don't have common numerators, I don't have common denominators. By the way, I'm assuming you know how to find common denominators. I will show you that as the last step, but know that I really want you to focus on using common numerators and benchmark fractions to compare fractions. And when we're thinking about third and fourth graders, those are really the main strategies that we're going to have them focus on. This time I want to compare how close it is to one. And in that, I might be also comparing how close it is to one half. So five eighths, is that more than one half or less than one half? Well, first let's think about half. Half would be four eighths. So I can see that 
that, okay, it's more than one half. Now I will want to look at four fifths. Now we just looked at fifths in the last problem, so I know that half would be two and a half over five or 2.5 over five. That doesn't really help me that much. Here's what I want you to think about. How close is four fifths to the whole? So in this case, we can actually compare it and say that this is closer to one. So this one is going to be closer to one. So I actually know that four fifths is larger than five eighths because it is so much closer to one than this five eighths. But let's just prove this using common denominators just to make sure our math was correct. So common denominators in this case, easiest thing, the least common mul multiple of eight and five is going to be 40, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just make myself some equivalent fractions here so that I can see. Now I've got 25 over 40 and 32 over 40, I can see that 25 copies of 1 40th is less than 32 copies of 1 40th, therefore I know that I'm correct, 4 fifths was larger. All right, let me do one more and show you a common misconception we wanna make sure we take care of. Sometimes I have students that say um, that one fraction is larger than the other because it's one away from the whole. And being one away from the whole doesn't necessarily give me enough information all the time, depending on my other fraction, to be able to tell whether it's larger or smaller. So be careful with that, it's a common misconception. Let's actually draw a picture in deep dive and and see if this one away from the whole actually can help us in this case without making common denominators. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, so I've got fifths, and I'm gonna go ahead and shade in four copies of one fifth. And on this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so I have eighths, and I'm gonna shade in seven copies of one eight, or seven slices of one eight, if I wanna think about it that way. Which one is larger? First of all, I can tell right away. It would be seven eighths. So it's easy to see that seven eighths is more than four fifths. When I think about them both being one slice less than a whole pizza, if I wanna think of it that way, this slice is actually gonna be a smaller slice than this one. So really, when I'm missing a fifth, that accounts for more of the pizza that I'm missing versus when I'm only missing an eighth. So in this case, when they're only one away, I can see that seven eighths is larger than four fifths because of those slices being smaller. I would highly encourage you to always use a second method to check when you compare fractions. It's really good for your own fraction number sense um, and drawing those models is always a great way to cement your fractions knowledge. I hope you found this video helpful and you now have some better strategies with how to compare fractions using common numerators and benchmark fractions.